Good evening, everybody. Welcome, parents of our Boston College students. And for any non-Boston College students, welcome to our webinar from the Carroll School of Management at BC. My name is Thomas Wesner. I'm the director of the Carroll School Summer Management Catalyst Program. Uh, with me tonight is our program coordinator, Ali Isales, and uh, she'll be fielding your chat questions tonight during our, what we think will be about a 28, maybe 27 minute presentation. So welcome to all. Um, I want to uh, start off by giving just a, a brief overview of the Summer Catalyst program before I go through some slides. And again, please chat um, any questions you have tonight or email questions to us at catalyst at bc.edu. And if we do not, don't get to your question this evening, we'll reply to you tomorrow. Um, anyway, uh, again, welcome. We're approaching our 10th year managing uh, this terrific program in the Carroll School. We've had close to 600 students enroll and successfully complete the program. Uh, it's been a tremendously popular program and a highly impactful program for our students. Um, Catalyst was designed to provide an opportunity for liberal arts students uh, and that includes nursing and education, right? And philosophy majors and English majors, and history majors and economics majors, anything in our Morrissey College or any other school that's not the Carroll School of Management uh, to introduce the students to the world of management and the language of management. Uh, we want to, and we seek to provide a strong foundational, functional knowledge of areas of management that students might go into even without knowing it when they are freshmen or sophomores or juniors. I'll talk in a few minutes about the students that typically apply and, and it ranges from rising sophomores through rising seniors, even seniors every year apply. They might be starting a job in September or August, though they might not have a job and they might just want to take kind of what they consider boot camp in management to get familiar with the language of business what they might be doing uh, in the world of work. Um, a decent percentage of our students who take Catalyst end up declaring a minor in the Carroll School of Management. Um, one of the distinct advantages to Catalyst is that the full courses, the three credit courses, all count towards a minor in management. So students can kind of get a head start take a look and see what area they might be interested in pursuing. Uh, many, many of our students say that before they declared a minor in the Carroll School, and our minors are extremely popular, they wanted to check out what finance was, right? What, what financial accounting was, what marketing was, what, what those courses looked like and felt like. And, uh, and so it's really uh, a chance to let them dip their toes in before they jump in and declare a minor and then maybe find out, gee, I'm in the wrong one or it's too late to turn around. So it's a really good way in um, over an eight week summer. Uh, no matter what type of work our students and BC graduates end up doing, we know that, and all of you know, that having a uh, facility and an understanding of all of the disciplines within management it, are essential to uh, success in the world of work. Um, employers uh, recruit heavily at Boston College, as you all know. They love BC students. They love Boston College students. No matter the school, our students interview really well. They're excellent all around young men and women. They engage people. They're curious. They're interesting to talk to. They're talented. They're hardworking. They're polite. We have just incredible students here. Now, what employers say to us and say to our Catalyst students is your Marcy College, uh, you know, on your resume is really um, enhanced when it says next to a Carroll School of Management as well. And that becomes a talking point right away for Catalyst grads when they go out and interview. Employers want to say, now, what is this? You list two schools on your resume. 
And every student virtually comes back and says to us, that was a real game changer for them. So that's one of the distinct advantages and reasons why students uh, also might like um, to, to enroll in Catalyst, to apply for Catalyst. Uh, this year, importantly, uh, we're going to be only offering an in-person program. The past couple of years, due to COVID, we were uh, we offered online programs for two years, and then last year we had uh, a remote option. But this year, 2023, we're just going to be in person. So let me walk you through, if I could, um, some slides. Um, Okay, so overview of the program. I'm just going to talk a little about that, the benefits, the structure, how it works, the impact on a student's transcript, how much it costs, right? Who should apply, when to apply, and uh, any questions you have that that Ali might forward to me. So what is Catalyst? So I, I started, I opened with a little bit of um, information about it. It's, a, it's an intensive full-time program uh, there's 11 credits and, and, and a point of interest. When we began Catalyst now 10 years ago, it was only for enrichment and uh, we did not offer any credits. And so the model was really for curious students that were curious to learn about management to come. And then over the years, we've tweaked and, and we've got it down now to uh, a program where we really need to offer uh, credit because there's a real value in it and we make our students work hard. So when a parent thinks about the value proposition here, you know, or a student, uh, you think, well, what does eight weeks, four days a week of class look like? And how does that compare to a 15 week semester? So it's about 72% of a full semester in roughly half the time. So that's a lot of work, right? And we start the day after university commencement in May and we end on July 14th. So, over those, you know, eight weeks, students learn a lot. They're here all the time. They're here in Fulton Hall. Um, they have great teachers. They make good friends, their classmates. But it's a good bit of work, right? It's it's three quarters of a full semester, and and those credits, students say to us, that's money in the bank, right? They can use those later on in helpful ways, uh, as maybe they want to take four classes and four classes at a later point, especially senior year, while they do an internship or something like that. Um, the faculty in our program are top notch. So every professor that teaches in this program is someone whose classes fill up on the first day. So even, uh, even our Carroll School students have a tough time getting the professors that teach in this program. So we really, um, we work hard to, to make sure we have full-time high energy teachers who are ready to go in the summer. Um, our program is a cohort model. So we have two sections, uh, A and B, and they travel and have class together uh, four days a week from about 9.30 to 11.45 in the morning would be the first class, two hours and 15 minutes. And then uh, 1.30, uh, sorry, 12.30 to 2.45, four days a week. And it's typically Tuesday through Friday is how we're gonna structure the, the program and how, how we've done it the past couple of years. Um, so they travel in groups. Now, parents would often ask, do they get to meet the other cohort, the other groups? And the answer is definitely yes, because we, we have lunches, we have pizza Fridays, we have a couple of field trips, bonding activities. And if they live on campus, they are usually assigned to live on the same couple of floors in a building uh, that has air conditioning and a small kitchen. Uh, so they get to meet each other and the classes are really fairly sized. Um, pretty, pretty small. They're not large, large classes. And so they get to know uh, each other and they get to know their professors who are here with just them. There's no other distractions during the summer. So that cohort model works really well. The other thing parents ask about when it comes to the cohort is my, my son or daughter's a rising sophomore. What about rising seniors? Do they get along? Do they hang out? Do they meet each other? And the answer is yes. Our upperclassmen and women become great mentors and, and advisors to the younger students. And it works naturally, and they really learn from each other. Uh, and they have a lot in common because, because they're not business students, um, but they're, they're curious about business. And that's something that's unique about the Catalyst student. They're curious, and they come to this program because they really want to learn. Not just they want to know things, not because it's on the exam, 
uh, but because they're curious. And that makes a really enriching, uh, powerful learning environment to teach in as well. Um, so what are the benefits of the program? Um, you know, here they are in the PowerPoint. I know some of you might be driving, so you can't see it. Um, the benefits include, right, of developing, you know, foundational grasp of what people in management do. And we, we teach our students, whether it's government, whether it's for profit, whether it's not for profit, people have to know what HR does, right? People have to know what the accountants do. They have to know what an audit is. They have to know what a cash flow statement is. They have to know what profit and losses, right? They need to know about investments, right? More than stocks and bonds, right? In, in finance, right? Uh, marketing, how do you sell your product? What is lifetime value, right? What do the marketing folks do? How do you bring income and revenue into that company? What do these people in these offices do? And then students get to know, well, what do I like to do? What do I think about, you know, in terms of contracting, HR, risk assessment, strategy? Uh, how does it all come together? So students really leave and I think they, they gain comfort and they gain confidence that they can go out and compete with anyone and that they have the fundamental skills to come in and converse with people in those distinct offices. Um, the program also helps students satisfy their prerequisite requirement to take uh, higher level classes in the Carroll School, um, as well as complete coursework towards their minor if they choose to pursue a minor. Last summer, uh, of our 80 or so students, about 70%, just slightly over, indicated that they were pursuing a minor. And parents might say, well, what, what if students don't want to pursue a minor? I, I, that's a great question. And, and the answer is that students may not want to pursue a minor, but they know what they don't want to do and why. Right? They have a reason for it. Uh, but again, if they do pursue a minor, it gives them a real head start towards that minor. And they know what they're getting into before they just walk into the dean's office and declare a minor. The program is also ideal for students who are planning to go abroad uh, for a semester where it might be harder to take certain classes they need towards their major, their concentration, right, or a minor. Um, it also helps students that have multiple majors. Um, so there's, there's real value. Um, something else that um, our graduates and students learn is how to um, build a resume to stand out uh, and compete for an internship, right? The world is a competitive place. The labor market's competitive. We help our students develop career strategies through one of our modules, our mini courses to work on their personal brand, right? How do they describe their interests, their talents, what they're curious about, right? Where they come from and who they are as a person and what they really want to do and how they can contribute to an organization. You got to practice that. And so we push our students to do that through our career module, which the program evaluations always highlight as one of the, the real benefits, tangible benefits of our program. Okay, so how is the program structured? Here it is. Here are the dates. May 23rd, which is the day after university commencement, which is always a Monday. The last Monday in May that's not Memorial Day is our commencement at Boston College through July 14th. And so that allows us to run everything with a few field trips in there, uh, holiday weekend, the, the, the Memorial Day weekend comes up, the 4th of July uh, weekend, we always give the students a little break, probably four days. Our schedule is not done yet. It's taking shape, but we'll share this with the students that are admitted student reception uh, in early April. Um, so what students do is they take three full classes, right? Three, three credit courses and two course modules. Um, the professional development and career planning class um, and an Excel module, Microsoft Excel module. Uh, the the pr career professional development program, the career planning program uh, over the years of Catalyst, uh, what we do is we, we, like for example, it's typically on Tuesday night, we have uh, panels come in either in person or via Zoom. 
and they talk about their careers in consulting, in finance, in law, in banking, in accounting, in marketing, right? And these are all now Catalyst graduates, Boston College graduates, who are also Catalyst graduates, who love participating in the Catalyst career panel because they graduated from the program and they found their way partly through through Catalyst and through our outstanding career advising staff. Um, and that's kind of a really neat and fun part of the program. We 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 have our own and we kind of recruit from within. So our own students now make contact with people that are out there working who walked in their shoes a few years ago. Um, I have now up a, a slide on the course work, the full courses, again, financial accounting, marketing principles, and the students have a choice. They, they make an election to, to take either fundamentals of finance or business law. Um, and students make that choice for whatever particular reason they have. They, they may not want to do finance. They may want to do law. Maybe they're, they, they just want to go to law school, but they want to take kettles. Maybe they don't want to do law. They want to take that later. And right now this summer, they want to do finance. So those courses, finance and law, meet at the same time. And students choose which one they like. Um, everyone takes the career skills. They get one credit. Uh, for the career skills module and one credit for the Excel module. And everybody needs to know Excel, right? Everyone needs to know it. And our teacher is great. All of our teachers are great. So those are the courses they take within the eight weeks. Um, three credits, three credits, three credits for the full. And again, one each. Uh, the the module modules are pass-fail. Um, and the students show up and do the work and submit uh, assignments on time and they give a good faith effort, they're going to pass, right? So one of the questions folks ask all the time is what is the impact uh, on my uh, my transcript? Um, and so it's important um, for students to understand and for parents to understand that the the courses count, the three credit courses count towards their graduation requirements and they impact the grade impacts their transcript, right? So it will be factored into their GPA, those three full courses. Factored into the GPA, it's what it is. Um, and when students graduate, we have a graduation ceremony, cake, a little celebration, some talks, some, some awards for students who performed well. Um, and students are, are granted a certificate of completion of the program for successful completion uh, the night of the last day of class. Um, how much does Catalyst cost? It's $15,300 um, for the summer ahead. And again, that's sir, 70, to, you know, slightly over 70% of a full semester of coursework in the Carroll School taught by full-time faculty uh, who I promise all are excellent teachers, high energy, good people, caring people, Love the students, love what they teach, right? Great with pedagogy, wonderful teachers. So 15,300. Uh, BC campus housing, we're always asked about this. It's available for approximately, the, the, and this is run by a separate office. We don't control housing. BC campus housing uh, charges roughly $30 per night. And for the full stay during Catalyst, it's about $1,800. Um, plus or minus, and that does not include a meal plan. But campus housing um, puts our students in the same couple of floors in the same building. And students have some flexibility typically with that office where they can ask to live with a certain roommate or friend or something. But that's up to campus housing, how they manage that. Uh, and importantly, um, some families uh, would ask if, if they could uh, qualify for financial aid. And the answer is yes. We... Um, a grant financial aid that's need-based. And the condition is that a student and a family uh, will have to receive financial aid to be eligible for aid from our program. So there's a limited number of need-based scholarships uh, for our students. And we ask students who ha have need uh, to apply uh, by early February, uh, maybe, maybe middle of February. Um, 
to be eligible because because uh, we need to move on on, on those um, applications with our financial aid office. So who should apply to our program? Who is it really designed for? Uh, non carroll school students, liberal arts students. Every year we get some Lynch School of Education and Human Development applicants. Typically we, we get a nurse, uh, a nursing student, a Cannell School of Nursing student uh, or two who might want to go into hospital administration or healthcare administration. The Lynch School students might want to go into higher education or leadership, right, or school administration. So it's great when teachers have a background in accounting and understand how budgets work, right? And uh, over, you know, we don't teach about overrides, but they know how budgets work. They know what folks in the management side of schools do. Um, so, but all non Carroll school students, including graduating seniors, as I mentioned earlier, are welcome to apply. And we also accept and welcome applications from non-Boston College students. Every year, we typically have a few non-BC students enroll. They come in, they're warmly welcomed by our students. They live on campus with our students. They get a BC ID card. The card lets them use the, the, the facilities, the Plex, right? Our Plex, our recreational complex. Um, and they, they, they enjoy the campus for the summer and make some really good connections here. Um, so non-BC students are welcome to apply as well. Uh, what is an application evaluated based on? Uh, the courses the students take has taken, and we know that with freshmen, they've only had one semester under their belt. So we know we have a limited sample size of grades. Uh, in some cases, we'll interview students. Um, and so courses taken, their major, right? We're very attentive to the fact that some majors might be a force fit for students. They might say, gee, I was in the wrong major and I struggled here and there, but you know, maybe I've improved or within my new major, my grades are X, Y, and Z, right? So we really take a complete look at the totality of the circumstances when it comes to applications. I think we give every benefit of the doubt because these are students we know. These are Boston College students. And so we know what it took for them to get in here, right? We know the coursework they they have here and how hard the you know university court is, uh, core is and, and how demanding that is. We look at the GPA, um, we look at their resume and any extracurricular activities, COVID limited extracurricular activities um, for a few years. So older students were impacted by limited activities. Uh, and we also students to write, uh, also fill out a, a brief essay that describes what they would contribute to the program, why they want to take the program and what they would contribute to it. We want, we want you, you know, young men and women on campus who, and, and they're already givers, we already know many of them, but the, the, we want students who want to come and contribute and really work hard during the summer. Um, we tell students that on the first day that, you know, in the next eight weeks, your career prospects can change. Right, this program can have a huge impact on your career trajectory, and we want you to take yourself seriously, and we want you to get serious about your life and the possibilities uh, in the world of work for you, and to really buckle down and come out of this program changed and impacted and influenced by the teaching, the content, the friends you make, um, and the opportunity to kind of launch your career and maybe what you didn't even think about before taking Catalyst. So. It's time to enjoy a summer on campus. Uh, friends might be on the beach having a good time, recreating. Well, you can bust your, you know, you can bust your back for eight weeks and really work hard to commit. And you're going to come out of it kind of a changed person, thinking differently about the prospects uh, ahead for you. And students rise to that challenge. Our students love challenges, and um, we get one after another after another catalyst grad come back and say that program was transformational in my in my life. So we're really happy with where the program is. We get tremendous support from our dean and our administration at BC um, to do what we need to do to make it work. Uh, and we have tremendous talent uh, working in the program. Um, the application is due on March 15th. And so we set this date intentionally knowing that our students like all We'll wait to the last minute sometimes. And so spring break falls right there in the first week of March. 
And so we said, we'll give students till, you know, the week after they return from break to submit. So March 15th, and they apply on our website. Uh, and then decisions will be sent out by the first week of April. Uh, students who are admitted will have a an information night for admitted students. They'll meet other admitted students. We welcome them. We have some pizza. We talk about uh, Catalyst alumni. Um, talk about the program and, and how it impacted them and what they do for work and how it might have led to an internship or full-time jobs for many of them. Um, in areas that they never considered when they enrolled in BC, in the Morrissey College, right? In private equity, they're in accounting, they're in finance, they're working at a bank, they're doing marketing, and they, you know, are philosophy majors or English majors, right? So our Catalyst students coming in really like listening to our alumni. And so deposits are due on May 1st, and then students take their final exams. Uh, if they if they sublease an apartment off campus, and subleasing is freely available because a lot of our juniors who live off campus for that year have apartments available. Or if they live on campus, the housing office is typically very accommodating in terms of letting students um, move their, leave their stuff in their dorm and go home for a week and then come back and move into their new dorm. Uh, freshmen, and so, so, so most, most of our students live in 2000, COMF, 2K, we call it. And so housing will accommodate Catalyst students typically when they are staying on campus. Parents worry about, do I have to take everything home and move them back? And the answer is typically no. But again, housing makes that decision. Um, here's a picture of our graduation ceremony last year. Um, this was the in-person group. Um, we have it in Fulton. We give certificates. We celebrate the achievements of our students, and we wish them a happy six weeks before they return to campus or go abroad. And so I think, um, Allie, are we doing fine here? I think this concludes our webinar. It's 628. I thought it would be 627. I'm over by a minute. And uh, I thank all of you for participating and listening. If you had to cut in or cut out, we're going to post this session tomorrow on the Catalyst website. We if you want to listen to it again or listen to parts of it you couldn't hear, please find this posted tomorrow. I look forward to meeting your sons and daughters. It's a privilege to meet your sons and daughters. They're outstanding young men and women. Right? Our students are second to none. And so thank you for entrusting us with them. And have a good night, everybody. And thanks for tuning in.